ഓക്കെ റിച്ചർഡ് കോറിബായ് എഡ്വിൻ ആലിങ്ടൺ റോബിൻസൺ ഓക്കെ സോ ദിസ് പോയം കംസ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് കാറ്റഗറി യു ക്യാൻ ടെൽ മീ ഇൻ യോർ ആന്തലോജി വിച്ച് കാറ്റഗറി ദിസ് പോയം ടേൺസ് ഇൻ റിച്ചർഡ് കോറി യു നോ യു ഹാവ് യെസ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് ടു ദ can you please repeat it? society society thank you right okay it comes in the society good now let's read this whenever richard cory went downtown we people on the pavement looked at him he was a gentleman from soul to crown clean favored imperialistly now this poem which comes on the society talking about the social issue or something related to a social problem now here we see about a particular person so most of the other poems which come in under society they were talking about some social issues here we are looking at a particular person but also we see the community in general as well now who is the name what is the name of this person who is this person he is richard cory so this is the name of the person Thank richard cory okay when downtown that means so maybe he is from the uptown where the rich people live and he is going to downtown whenever whatever the time he goes downtown we people on the pavement looked at him now what can you tell about the social status of the people who are living on the pavement who might be the people that are living on the pavement can they be rich people what sort of people are living on pavement yes poor people poor people yes okay so poor people okay so maybe they are selling something for their daily needs likewise so the poor people living on the pavement looked at him right so whenever a rich person appears imagine that we being most of us being the middle class people we also look at wow what a billionaire he is like was if a billionaire turns up we also looked at that person right so the people the poor people when compared to them he was a very rich person whenever richard cory went downtown people on the pavement we now who is narrating the poem here we see we we means the people on the pavement so someone belonging to that particular community is narrating the poem we people on the pavement looked at him so the poor people they are looking at the person who looks so glorious and no he was a gentleman from soul to crown what do you mean by soul soul is your food so you can see from your foot to the to head okay from foot to head he is a gentleman that means he is a gentleman in the real sense of the word once you look at him from the shoes from to the hat he is a gentleman right so clean favored imperial is clean clean favored means you can say a clean cut person that means favor means you can see this spelling specially used in american english without the u but if you use it in british english you say f a v o u right okay favored and imperialistic clean favored here means no favorations okay so he treats everyone equally okay so he has no favoration for anyone and he is a clean cut person okay right so what are politicians sometimes say we are clean cut people like this which is a lie by the way but this person is a clean cut person clean favored no favorations at all okay he is very honest with his uh, treatment for others as well imperial is slim now imperial means normally imperial means kingly or majestically okay slim slim means you know not a very like not a, a well built person okay so slim person you know right in singhala you call kettu right so imperial slim means he is extremely slim okay so kingly slim okay so you can say extremely slim person 
so you can say although he was a very rich person now what is the picture that comes into our mind first ah uh, he is a very rich person he gentleman maybe some sort of a well built person but when we come to the last stanza the last two words we picture a person who is very slim extremely slim person okay so we we visualize the person who is extremely slim now you can see in this poem you find a rhyme scheme as well and also here what is the rhyming scheme now you can see downtown crown then also you can see these two words him and slim so you can see town and crown if you look at the pronunciation they are rhyming together and him and slim okay so him and slim are rhyming together right so if you look at the next stanza also you can see c d c d rhyming okay so you can see a b a b c d c d e f e f likewise the rhyme scheme goes so this poem has a regular rhyme scheme okay and with the description with the physical description given you can picture a person from the uptown going to the downtown and people on the pavement looking at him and he was a gentleman from soul to crown being favored and imperially slim so this help to generate visual imagery in the minds of readers so richard cory's physical appearance is vividly described in this part and also a little bit of his qualities as well right so are you clear with the first stanza anything to add any question that you have you can comment on the questions that you have i'm happy to answer them right let's move on to the next stanza then if you have no other question the second stanza says and he was always quietly arrayed what do you mean by quietly arrayed quietly arrayed means he was well dressed okay he was well dressed okay and he always human when he talked he was a very human person a very kind person kind hearted person he understood the people like was when he talked human person okay, not a very rude or uh, person who is very cruel like this no he was a human person he was so human when he talked but still fluttered pulses when he said what do you mean by fluttered pulses now fluttered pulses means like getting excited excited then you can say panting okay so when you see somebody if you are so excited to meet for example if you meet a celebrity you will be fluttering pulses imagine that someone very popular comes in and you got the chance to speak with that person which is a rare opportunity right you might be fluttering pulses but who should flutter pulses here the people on the pavement should flutter pulses uh, when they speak to richard cory but what happens actually richard cory feels very uncomfortable very excited when he meets the people on the pavement and he fluttered pulses with a great difficulty he is saying good morning that means he was so excited or maybe he was very nervous when he said good morning and glittered when he walked glittered means he was shining he shine he is shining when he walked or you can say he shone if you use the past tense okay so he is shining when he walked okay right so you can see he was so rich that is why he is shining now shining means is he wearing that sort of a glamoring dust or something or a gold dust or something no maybe he has new shoes new clothes so if you are wearing new things you are also shining no right so that is why he is shining so you see the physical appearance and his qualities further described in the second stanza and you can here also see the rhyme scheme arrayed and said talked and walked right 
Moving to the third stanza, now we see his other skills or other attributes. And he was rich, he was richer than the king. So he was a very wealthy person. Isn't that so? And admirably schooled in every grace. So he had studied, okay, he had got the education in all the aspects which are possible. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So people wanted to be like Richard Corey. Richard Corey was more like a role model for them. Okay, so, and people, why did they want to be like Richard Corey? Because they liked him. No, because they were jealous. They wished that we were in his place. If we had the opportunity to be richer like that person, don't you feel that if you see a very rich, rich person, and if we had money, like we could have had all the fortunes in the world, all the comforts in the world. So haven't you dreamed of being a very rich person or to wish that you were a billionaire like that person? Imagine that you are watching a movie of a billionaire. You feel that, what if I had that great amount of money and not? Don't you feel that? So the people, the poor people, they felt the same. Okay, so they were jealous of this person. And that is why he did not, they did not feel he was one of them. Okay, so, but they wanted to be in his place. It is not to kill him or something, but they wanted to be like him because they felt in short, he was everything. He had everything he wanted. And that is the life we want. Okay, so work hard and you can one day be like Richard Corey. Something like that. People had that notion. So people were, what? Assuming him based on the outward appearance. So on we worked and waited for the light. Here waited for the light means they waited for the better days to come. For the better days to come. Right? And went without meat and cursed the bread. So they did not have good food to eat even. Okay, so they barely had Maybe they had no meat to eat and maybe the bread was very, we will say very hard. Okay, can't eat. So, you know, the soft bread was eaten by the rich people and the poor people, they had very hard bread. Okay, and Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. So what happened to Richard Corey? This wealthy person who had everything one calm summer night. So outside environment was so calm and nothing was turbulent, okay? So if it was a stormy night where wind was hustling and all, it is possible for a person to commit suicide. But although the outside environment was calm, he was going through a lot inside. Maybe he had a lot of problems. So we can't judge a person with their appearance Appearance is not the reality. That is the main theme which is brought out in this poem. So he went home and put a bullet through his head. So he ultimately committed suicide. Okay, so we always believe that the grass is more greener in others' sight. Okay, so that is why we always wanted to be like the other people. And we always judge the appearances. We don't look at the reality. And Richard Corey, maybe he was alienated. He was lonely. Okay, so the loneliness of this old age, maybe he had no friends. He had no one to care and share. And maybe due to these reasons, he might have committed suicide. You are free to decide why might he has committed suicide. What might be the reasons? Okay, so for him to commit suicide. So although he had everything practically where other people wanted, he had his own problems. So you can see like recently some celebrities committing suicide and not. So appearances can be deceptive, right? They might be like depression is not just crying into a corner and all. So this can also be the depression. So due to the depression, he committed suicide. And people who had real problems, according to them, they didn't commit suicide. So you can't diagnose the mentality of somebody looking at the outward appearance. Okay, I can't judge you look at, looking at your outward appearance and you can't judge me looking at how I look like. Can you understand? So that is the moral message the writer tries to bring out here. 
So the people on the pavement, they had nothing to eat. They had a real social problems, but they didn't commit suicide because they were going to face the life. But Richard Corey practically had everything, but he did not have the mental happiness. So Richard Corey was alone, okay? But the people on the pavement, they are we, okay? They always call themselves as the we, the community, it is us. So that is a gang of people, okay? So they are a whole, but Richard Corey was isolated. He was all alone. So he maybe he could not mingle with the people from the uptown, neither he could mingle with the people from the downtown. So he had the reasons because he was so lonely, so alienated, he ultimately ended up committing suicide. So that marks the end of the poem.